Namaskar. Good evening, everyone. I would say about the topic that we are talking about today, don't quit, renew your mind, find your fire. I think we all have fire in us and we all have ambitions, we all have aspirations, we have our motivational speakers, we have inspirations and there's something that turns around and brings that change that everybody wants in their life. We have lots of students here. I can see a lot of school students here. Were any of you during your growing up time, say between six to seven to eight years, 10 years old, ever locked in a dark room? You can raise your hand. Were you ever locked in a dark room? We started 2016, we started an initiative called Paint the Haravi. That was only focusing on the beautification of the slum. Today we go up to over 1,000 slums across India and villages and many more, connecting to so many more people. While we were doing the work in Dharavi, we do a lot of uh, art workshops, we talk about hygiene, we talk about waste management, we talk about toilet use, we talk about why women should work, and we actually get them to work, and, and why children should educate themselves. Why is education important? During one of our art camps, there was no topic given. I said, let's see all of you paint what you like. And once the art camp was over, you know, I get all the paintings. Now we select few of them, which we want to, you know, show to everyone that what is, what they are actually uh, trying to portray. In one artwork, in one paper that I saw, the, the, the whole page was black and there was a small little square white in the center. Now that of course was going to catch my eye. I, I called the student and I told him, I said, son, what have you drawn? He looked at me, he didn't say anything. I said, what have you drawn? Because being an abstract artist myself, it just looked really intriguing and something that I really wanted to discover what the child was trying to portray. And he said, if you sit down, he said it in Marathi and Hindi, he said, if you sit down, then I'll explain it to you. He said, when I was little, he wasn't really grown up at that time, but he must have been in his teens, say 12, 13, 14. And he says, when I was little, my mother worked in people's home. And my stepfather, after she left in the morning, because she was cleaning, she had to leave early. My stepfather would be at home. Before he went to work, he would beat me up, lock me in a room, and go. The room was pitch dark, because this was a slum we are talking about. And there was a little hole in the cement between the bricks and the only light that I could see. And till that light was there, that little light, I could feel that it's daytime. And before, as soon as it started fading, I knew it's evening and my mother's going to come back home and open the door. Now, when we talk about don't quit, we talk about never lose hope. That child could have lost hope then and there, cried, complained to his mother that this is what is happening to me. But he knew the hardship his mother is going through. So he never complained, but he kept it inside his heart. He grew with that. And at the art workshop, when he painted that, and after telling the story to me, he gave me a big hug, like tight hug, and he cried and cried and cried, and I let him cry. I said, today, do you feel happy? He says something that I have never spoken to my own self. I would have not even told you. But because you got me to do some sketching here, some drawing here, my friend told me, I also came running. I said, there's something happening here. Let me also go and sketch. And I did that and I feel like the mountain. I mean, I'm saying it in a very grown-up language, but he said it in a very child's language that a mountain over my head and heart is off today. I feel liberated. And there are so many stories like that. I mean, I've written in my book about this story. There's a child who's never seen a pencil in his life. And today is an MBA graduate. The kid that I'm talking about today is doing his medical. His mother does not work in anybody's home anymore. He'll be becoming a doctor in the next two years. But he never gave up. He never thought that I'm going to live this life forever or I'm going to die in this you know, one uh, eight by eight room with darkness. He used that one dot of light 
to make his life ahead. And this is how I say how art so beautifully connects you to people. This initiative you saw here was not about just coloring the walls. When we launched Missile Mumbai in 2018, I told everyone, Paints Dharavi was about beautification, about cleaning the slums, about painting the slums. But Missile Mumbai was the holistic growth initiative where we focused on why children education is important. Everyone talks about, let's empower women, you know, children should study, we should focus on girl-child education, waste management, hygiene. But how many of us really on ground are working? I always say advocacy is good only 20% and this is my logic. Not everyone has to agree to what I think, but I feel on ground work is 80% and 20% is advocacy. When we started work in our first village in Rajasthan a couple of years back, everyone, my first visit, everyone gave me water in plastic cups and uh, these jars, small little bottles. And I told them why in plastic, you know, why don't we? So an old lady walked up to me and said, ma'am, everyone says don't give in plastic, but nobody tells us what to give it in. We give it in a steel glass, people say, you know, there is one bad smell, water is not good, something is not good. So what do we do? So this is why I say advocacy is 20% is very good. But with that, you have to also give the solution. And today, if you come to that village, it's called Jauli near Alwar. Not one single household you will see which is using plastic for tea or water or milk or anything. So this is how you change. This is how the curiosity builds. And life is not always about bed of roses. You're not always going to, uh, you know, think of something and get that. You have to work hard for it. My father was in the army. We traveled my early days into the remotest area. I started in a Hindi medium. Then again, my father from one area gets posted to a new city where I have to go to English medium school. And trust me, for first couple of months, I didn't speak to anyone because everyone was talking to me in English and I didn't know how to reply. I didn't know what to say and I would be like, mm, mm, okay, yes. That much everyone knows, right? And failing in my first exam in school, topping in the last one, the final exam, it was a journey of that one year that I thought, you know what, if I don't study now, I will never be able to do what I really want to do. At that time, it's also very difficult to understand what you really want to do. But something that I already knew what I want to do is do something with kids. Be it through art, be it through MBA or be through being a doctor or a, or a engineer, architect, interior, whatever profession I choose, it has to be connected to children. So when I started practicing art, I moved it towards social uh, work. Because for me, something in, inside was always missing or I would have missed if I didn't do this. I love children. For me, that's like, you know, I sleep, breathe, eat everything which my kids are doing. We take almost two million kids to school today. And when I see them doing so well in class, kids living in the slums, kids living in the villages, the fire in their belly, trust me, is something that you are, you know, you've not seen it. So most of you here today are hearing about don't quit, follow your passion. So many of you will, so many of you will probably not and land up doing something that you didn't want to do but because you have to have a career, you have to have a job, you will do it. But I feel, just now before I came here, I was doing an interview and I said in that, that if I grip, I would be most ungrateful because something I love the most, God has blessed me to do that. I love children. I really like to see women working, earning, and I always say that women will only be self-reliant when they have money in their bank. They will truly be empowered when they have money in their bank and they have the authority to use it. By only talking about women empowerment, they are not getting empowered. So when you learn, you have to earn. That is most important. Because not, it's, and it's not only about earning money, it's about getting that self-respect. If you're married from your husband, from your in-laws, from your parents, from your friends, it's about having an identity which is very, very important. I don't think everyone is really working for money. Earning money is very important. It gives you a good life. It makes you also help a lot of people. 
connect to a lot of people and then start a new journey. But it is about you owning it. It is about you saying what you do. My mother's been a housewife. She's brought up three kids beautifully. And I think it's, it's very tough to bring up children with right principles and, you know, right values. That itself is like the biggest job that you're doing. But she did it so gracefully. So even when we tell our girls in the slums, women in the slums, that you want to work, come and work, but decide because there's nothing wrong in being a housewife. But if with that, looking after your family, if you want to do something more, then come. Because there is no substitute to hard work. And there's only, they come and tell us, what are the criteria, ma'am, to start learning here and working? I said, hard work, hard work, hard work, consistency is what we need. You cannot come in one day and next week, you know, something is wrong in your family and you can't come. You have to decide. You take that first step, I will take you 100 steps forward. Eight and a half plus lakh women across India are today working with us, connecting with us. And they are making things that probably they never thought. My girls from LC, they, they are close to LC in Kashmir and they've never even been to Srinagar, have traveled the entire country today for the stuff they do, the products they make, and how they are earning. Everyone actually can be here giving you their stories, telling you about what they have achieved, what they are learning, and what they are doing. So it's actually about never giving up. And you're never going to, if you think that I've decided this and I'm going to get it, maybe life has something totally different for you. I'm sure you've heard so many people say that I wanted to be a doctor, I landed up being a journalist. I wanted to be this, I landed up being Dhirubhai Ambani. So it's like, you know, your destiny takes you there. But your hard work, your consistency, and your honesty to your work is most important. And I always say, I follow Bhagavad Gita very strongly. And I say, it's my guide to life. And anytime I'm stuck somewhere, I just close my eyes, open the chapter, and that's the answer. I really needed to hear. I really needed to listen. Because God always has the best plan for you. When I get an award, I feel very happy. And I say, thank you, God. And I'm, I'm, in my heart, I'm feeling, oh my God, I'm so deserving. I got it. Thank you so much. When somebody else gets it, that person says, thank you, God. But I'm not saying, thank you, God. I'm saying, don't you think, God, I was more deserving? Why did I get it? Why did that person get it? But when you got it, that time you were in crib, right? You said, thank you, God. When somebody else has got it, you're questioning God again. Why didn't I get it? So that is something we have to drop. We do not have to compete with anyone. We have to compete with ourselves. Because end of the day, whatever you're doing in life is for whom? For yourself, right? You want to be recognized. You want to be powerful. You want to be famous. You want to earn money for yourself, not for yourself, not to prove a point to anyone. Yes, to bring respect to your family, to your loved one that they look up to you and say, you know, we are so proud of you. So that is something we need to have. We have to develop faith. Faith is very important. And once you put your faith in God, that is like putting faith in yourself. Try doing it. Trust me, it works. Have faith. Have a good heart. Be honest to what you do. Even when you're playing a sport or you're cooking in the kitchen, if you're honest to yourself, it will give you the pleasure. Tons of money can't buy you. So try doing that. And we have to make a continuous effort. Nothing was built overnight. There are a lot of speakers who came and spoke about how consistency and hard work goes a long way. There are some people who get success sooner. Some people get later. But we all get there. If it is meant to come to you, it will come. It's in your destiny, it will come. But what is in your hand is to give in your best. Whether you succeed or you fail, at least when you look back tomorrow, you will not regret, I didn't give it a try. But if we don't give it a try, we will always regret, oh my God, you know, I should have done it. So that question mark should never be there. Have a life with purpose. Find that purpose what it is. Even if you help one person in your entire journey of life, Trust me, it's worth living. And connecting to so many people will come. When you're teaching, you're not teaching, you're always actually coming back home, learning from them. When I teach kids, I always write, you will see my social media handle. Oh my God, I'm not teaching, I'm learning from them. Because they come back with some stories which actually are like, 
you know knowledge from god so never lose hope believe in yourself which is most important and also above that believe in your god because he wishes the best for us thank you so much